want you to remember about parallel. First of all, it's what you're going to see. If you're training to be a tech on anything at all, I can pretty much guarantee you that you will never see series circuits, probably. You may, you may not, but when I say a series circuit, I mean multiple loads, not multiple switches, multiple loads, things that do something. Okay? The reason is, obviously, that if this resistor or this resistor were to fail, then the other two would fail as well and you'd lose everything. And that's not how we build stuff. We build stuff in parallel. So this circuit has no connection to this circuit. This circuit has no connection to this circuit. And these components don't have anything to do with those components. That's parallel. Now, if you teach this, um, teaching the math for series is easy because it's 100 plus 30 plus 10 is 50. 10 plus 50 plus 30 is 90. So we already know we've got uh, 60, uh, excuse me, 50 ohms here and 90 ohms there. So um, adding those up is easy. Figuring out the resistance when we have this in parallel with this is a little harder. But I'm going to show you how to do that simply with the calculator and the inverse button. So uh, that's important. Now Ohm's law is still in control of everything. So the total amperage or current flow through this circuit, circuit C I guess, is going to be determined by the voltage of the system. Dropping stuff here. The voltage of the system, which is running about 12.3 or so, divided by the resistance of the circuit. So 12.3 divided by 50 is going to give us a number, and 10 plus 50 plus 30 is 90, so 12.3 divided by 90 is going to give us a number, and those two numbers will be the amperages, and we'll be able to read them right here on the amp meter, because I've got my amp meter completing the circuit for the board. Remember the amp meter, uh, if you put it on amps, you move the red lead here, but when you do, the meter's a jumper wire, and when the meter's a jumper wire, it will turn things on and can kill people. I don't care about blowing the fuse, I care about hurting people. Uh, we'll be able to read the voltage right here, so we'll be able to read voltage drops and current flow. And we'll do all the math to show you. Um, the next thing is that the voltage drops across each of these resistors is going to be controlled by two things. The amp flow through them and the resistance of them. If we transpose this formula and move ohms across and up, and move amps across and down, because we, we want to get ohms on that side by itself, then the formula now becomes volts over amps equals ohms. Is that what I want? No. What I want is I want to be able to figure out um, my voltage drops so I move the ohms over and then up and then that formula becomes volts equals amps times ohms. Well this is the E equals IR that I never use. Okay, So these are all three the same formula. Volts over ohms equals amps, that's the first one you should use because that's how this really works. This voltage and these resistances create that amperage volts over ohms equals amps. We can calculate our resistance by knowing the volts and the amps, and we can calculate our voltage drops by knowing the amps and the ohms. So what's going to control the voltage drop? The amp flow through it and the resistance. Well, I can already tell you that there's going to be different amp flows. This has 50 ohms, this has 90 ohms. So which one's going to have more amperage? Well, this one. And when this one has more amperage, these voltage drops will be higher because they're getting hotter because there's more amperage these voltage drops will be lower. The next thing is that these voltage drops will be in proportion. The 10 and the 10 will be equal and the 30 will be three times more than the 10. The 50 will be 10, uh, five times more than the 10, the 10 will be one third of the 30. That's how it works because that's what the formula does. Okay, That's what this formula does. So let's get this over with and I think uh, you'll be kind of intrigued by this. Um, First thing is, let's do the math for the total system. And I'll give you the uh, information the way that most people, uh, most people see it. 
So let me clear that. 10 plus 30 plus 10, 10 plus 30 plus 10, 10 plus 30 plus 10, 50. So we calculate that this is going to be 50 ohms. 10, 50, 30. Ten plus fifty plus thirty equals ninety. So we're calculating ninety. But I want to be precise, so I'm going to measure it. My switches are off, circuits are isolated. Remember the ohm meter requires that. I'm going to flip the voltmeter to ohms real quick, and we'll see how close we are. Starting up here, we get fifty point two ohms. So the real reading is 50.2 ohms. And here the real reading is the actual resistance is 89.9 or straight up 90. So we got lucky on that one. So what do we do next? Okay, well the next thing we care about is how many amps are going to flow through the circuit. So let me flip back to volts. Got the battery plugged in. Let me see what my voltage is coming to the board. And the voltage currently is 1264. I don't think it's going to drop. So I'm going to use 12.3. And I'm going to explain that to you this way. The more load you put on the battery, the lower the battery voltage drops. You all know that when you turn a vehicle on, and the headlights turn on and the voltage drops a little bit. You turn the rear window defogger on, the voltage drops a little bit. That's because the battery's having to push more electrons out and the total system voltage drops slightly, okay? So I'm going to use 12.3 and we've got 50 and 90. So let's see what we get. Make sure you can see this here. Okay. 12.3 divided by 50 equals 0.246. So I'm expecting 0.246 amps at about 12.3 volts. 12.3 volts divided by 90 ohms, 0.136 amps at 12.3 uh, volts. Now, it may be slightly higher, maybe slightly lower, but we're going to use these numbers to be more accurate. Okay? So, that's how that works. Okay? But how do we combine those resistors in parallel? How do we combine this circuit and this circuit in parallel? It's easy. You use the 1 over X button right there. So what I would do is I would type in 50 1 over X plus 90 1 over X equals 1 over X. And I get 32.14 ohms. So the total system is going to be 32.14. 32.2 ohms. Okay, so then the question is if the whole system is 32.2 then our calculation should be 12.3 volts divided by 32.2 ohms is about 0.38 amps. So I'm expecting 0.38 amps through 32 ohms if I did my math right. Now let me show you that again. 50 ohms 1 over X plus, because we're adding them up, 90 ohms 1 over X equals 1 over X. 32.14, we'll call it 32.2. We did the math, we come up with 0.38 amps. So, what does that mean? Okay, that means that the total system is going to draw 0.38 amps. This circuit is going to draw 0.246 amps or a quarter. This circuit is going to draw 0.13, which is just over an eighth. Okay, so that's the amperage of the system. Total amperage, 0.38. This circuit and this circuit add up 0.246 and 0.136. Now, what about the voltage drops? Well, we're back to this formula, right? So, if I know my amperage, 
then I can calculate my voltage drops. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's do this. I'm going to go clear again, make sure you can see the calculator. Okay, so the first one's 10, then 30, then 10, so we got two the same. So volts equals amps times ohms. That is correct. So my amps are 0.246. So my volts, uh, ohm, okay, so 0.246 times 10 equals 2.46. So I'm expecting 2.46 volts there. That's the same. 2.46, okay? Not drawing very well. Okay, and then what about the 30? Well, we can do it two ways. First of all, 0.246 times 30 equals 7.38. Okay, well, what else can we do? Well, we could have done 2.46 times 3 because it's a 3 to 1 ratio. So what happens if we do that? 2.46 times 3 equals 7.38. So the ratios uh, make it possible for me to calculate this as well. Well, the next question is, does this add up to system voltage? So we add, 12, uh, excuse me, let me clear that out. That was a mistake. Let's just do it this way. 2.46 plus 7.38 plus 2.46 equals 12.3 and we're working with 12.3. So those three add up, which Kirchhoff's law says they must. What about down here, okay? Well, these voltage drops are gonna be different because the current's different, okay? So we got a 10, a 50, and a 30 in 0.136. So let's run this one through real quick. 0.136 amps times 10 ohms equals 1.36. So this 10 is 2.46, this one's going to be 1.36 volts. The 50, 0.136 times 50 equals 6.8, 6.8. And the 30, 0.136 times 30 equals 4.08, so I expect 4.08. Well, let's check Kirchhoff's law, do these add up to 12.3? 4.08, make sure you can see, plus 6.8 plus 1.36 equals 12.24, pretty doggone close. Okay, so let's see if we get what we calculate. And this is why this type of teaching is, is I think, so effective because you can screw it up and you can make mistakes and you can check it and play and once a guy figures out how this all works, it becomes easy. You can solder in lights, and you can solder in motors, solder in lights, and solder in motors, and switches, and relays, and just build systems, man. It's fun. It's lots of fun. Just build, build, build. Build lots of systems. Um, and if you don't teach the math for the first three weeks of class, you got a lot of time to do this. Okay, well, let's see what we got. First of all, let's check this one, see if we get 0.246. I'm looking for 0.2425, and I get 0.25. That worked. Now, it's fluctuating between 2.4 and 2.5. Well, that's pretty much where it is, between 2.4 and 2.5. Okay, so that works. Well, let's turn that off, and let's see if we get 0.136 here. Yep, and it's fluctuating between 0.13 and 0.14. So... This is 0.136, so the math worked. Okay, my resistance divided into my voltage, gave me amperage, and the amperages worked. Well, let's see if they add up to 0.38, and sure enough, my expectation of 0.38 meets this expectation, or the reading of 0.38. So, proves that Ohm's Law works in a series path and in a parallel path, because we were able to calculate all the totals and all the individuals. Now, here's what matters next. What matters next are the individual voltage drops. Did we add them up properly? Okay, well, let's find out. First of all, do they add up to full system voltage? Yep, 1231. Yep, 1231. Okay, I'm expecting 2.46, and I get... Yeah, let me get it in there. I don't want to block the view here. 2.469. 7.38, what do we get? 
7.31 is a little low. Resistor is probably a little low. And 2.46, we're getting 2.49. So this resistor is a little higher than we thought, and this resistor is a little lower than we thought. And the voltage drop shows that. So those three work. There they were. Well, we've got 0.136 here, or excuse me, 1.36 here, and we get 1.36 volts as expected. On the 50, we get 6.8 as expected, and for the 30, we get 4.07 or 4.08. Wow, that's a good one, as expected. Okay? So that's how it works. Let me go over it slowly. These are the three formulas that can be used for Ohm's Law, but I'll remind you Ohm's Law is not math. This is Ohm's Law, not that, okay? Um, but Ohm's Law has math associated with it, so the math is secondary. This is the formula I think we should use first because it explains that volts and ohms make amps. That's the physical relationship. Then we can flip this over any way we want, and we can calculate the resistance of the circuit, and we can calculate the voltage drops of the resistors. That's what we're looking for. So, just real quick, let me see if it works out that we can calculate this backwards um, by doing this real quick. The total circuit resistance is 32.2. So let's see if we get 12.3 divided by 0.38. Let's see if we get 32. So let's do that. Let's do this formula real quick. Okay, clear, clear, clear. 12.3 volts, make sure you can read it, okay, uh, divided by 0.38 amps. Let's see if we get 32 ohms. Yep, 32 ohms. Okay, so it all works. It has to work, okay? Um, these voltage drops worked out. These voltage drops worked out. We were able to calculate each of the individual voltage drops, okay? Okay, guys, um, here's the summary. Parallel is what you're going to see in the world. Series is not. Don't focus on the series math because it's easier. Learn the parallel math because it's harder. But 1 over x right there. Use that button, 1 over x. Use it. Uh, so this is parallel math, and I hope it helps. Uh, remember... E equals IR is not our formula. That's an engineering formula that we don't use. Because on this meter right here, just to prove a point, I got volts, and I got ohms, and I got amps. I do not have E's, I's, and R's. So if your instructor is trying to teach you using E, I, and R, you need to make a polite argument that it probably doesn't make any sense to use E, I, and R because no one says you have to. Um, and the volts, ohms, and amps is going to be your better choice. Secondly, use that formula, not that formula. Because this formula explains that this voltage and this resistance makes that amperage. That's how it works. That's what you're learning.